we want now to look at various religious systems. <clears throat> uh, first of all, we'll be looking at the religious systems of clan and other religious systems, such as Confucianism and so forth. And I think as we look at the various religious systems, we see the reality that we talked about earlier on, that they are a mixture of both good and wrong, that there are uh, that the religions do not necessarily make us into righteous people by any means. It's interesting that in the book of Romans, a Paul writing to the Roman church, which was in the midst of a very sophisticated and advanced culture, the Roman culture, and it was permeated with the worship of many different divinities. It was a very religiously oriented culture. And Paul writing about that culture and about all cultures, in the book of Romans, he says, the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Since what may be known about God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power, and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood by what has been made so that people are without excuse. Creation, he says, is a witness to the truth of God. Creation is a sign <clears throat> of God. But now verse 21. For although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him. But their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like mortal human beings and birds and animals and reptiles. Therefore, God gave them over in the sinful desires of their hearts to sexual impurity, to degrading of their bodies with one another. They exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served created things rather than the Creator who is forever praised. Amen. And it goes on to describe this sense of fallenness and sinfulness that permeates the religions uh, because people choose to go their own sinful ways rather than to follow the Creator. Rather than worship the Creator, they worship created things, and that leads to an unraveling, oftentimes, of our moral compass, of our moral direction, when we worship the creature rather than the Creator. So he's describing that phenomenon. Uh, it reminds me, again, of my friend that I told you about that uh, was a professor at a university in the United States. And when I asked him, when will you become a Christian? He said, never. You know, why? Because I hate my father. And so there was a moral problem there. He, uh, he, uh, he knew something wasn't right. And if he would worship the one who created him, he would need to deal with his hatred toward his father, which he did not want to do. And that's what Paul says here, that within uh, the world, wherever we turn, we find uh, the permeation of sin, of rebellion against God, and even our religions become expressions of, distorted, of distortions of the truth. Rather than seek for the truth, we choose religions in ways that take us away from the truth. That's what he's saying here. And so we're going to be looking at a variety of religions now for the next <clears throat> couple days. And uh, first, I want to begin with uh, the uh, sort of religious environment that I grew up in in Tanzania. Uh, and when I say I grew up in this environment in Tanzania, I'm also recognizing that the kind of religious practices that I observed as a boy growing up in that society are typical of the religious practices in tribal societies and even national societies all over the world. So it wasn't just Tanzania where I observed this kind of religious practices, but uh, it's a universal phenomenon uh, in uh, sort of pre-Christian, pre-Islamic or whatever faith systems, tribal faith systems. <clears throat> 
And the first observation, so we're looking at the religions of clan and tribe is what we're doing. Look at the religions of clan and of tribe. And the first thing I would, I would mention is uh, that uh, we often refer to these faith systems as, uh, as faith systems which are, uh, which we, this is the term we use, uh, dynamism. Dynamism. Meaning they are dynamic. There is power, an awareness of power permeating their understanding of, this, of the uh, realms in which we live, both the seen and unseen realms in which we live, this dynamistic power. I mentioned the other day when I was describing autocratic religions, how that if you would stub your toe, you would assume it's because a god bit your toe. That's why you stub your toe. That's, dynamit, that's dynamism. That's the, that's the perception that within that root of a tree, there is a spirit or a divinity living. And so these spirits and divinities permeate every aspect of society <clears throat> and of nature as well. Now, there are several themes within, within um, uh, dynamism that we, should, that we should notice. First of all is creator. Creator. I'm not aware that there's an exception to my statement that dynamistic societies have an awareness of God the Creator. He might not be personal. Uh, he might not be known by the society. But there is an awareness, usually, I think universally, of a Creator God. That's why I said when Bible translators go into these societies to translate the Bible, with very rare exception, and Buddhism would be the exception, they find a local name for God, which is used in the Bible translation. So that's one aspect of dynamistic societies. Maybe it's one reason why dynamistic societies seem to be powerfully attracted to Christianity or to Islam, uh, because both Islam and Christianity are centered in the belief in a creator God, and these dynamistic societies have some awareness of a creator God. Among the Zanaki, where I grew up, the God's name was called Murungu. They didn't know much about God. They believed he'd gone on a journey and he would never come back again, but they knew that there was a creator God. So that's one feature. While we continue being a benevolent project, your kind donations will continue to be vital in fulfilling the calling of TVS ministry. We do count on your gracious support and cooperation. For detailed information, please visit tvsseminary.com.